from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and Award for the Best Educational Program. I'm your host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 57. If you've watched our last episode, I probably don't have to tell you which continent this video is from. These great vast plains of grassland are the scene of life and death drama for an array of iconic African animals. These common elands are a good example. They're herbivores, which means they eat plants. Elands, however, don't eat just any plant. They seek out those with the most nutrition, which keeps them on the move like many animals of the Serengeti Plains. When predators approach, the female elands form a wall of defense between the predator and their calves. As the grasslands dry out, elands change their diets to tree branches and roots that they dig up with their heels. Much of the plains are underwater during the monsoon season. Then they spend the rest of the year drying out, leaving small watering holes like the one you saw at the beginning of the episode. Competition is fierce as water a critical habitat need becomes scarce. And the predators know just where to stalk their prey. In the classic outworking of the food chain, herbivores get their life energy from plants and carnivores take in that energy when they eat the herbivores. Now as the apex predators, lions collect that energy that's concentrated in the animals they eat. As it's explained in the movie, The Lion King, it's the circle of life. It's also a balancing act. Herbivores were allowed to overpopulate. If they were, they would damage the ecosystem on which they depend. With wild dogs, hyenas, crocodiles, and lions, there's not much chance of that happening. With the carrying capacity protected, these ancient patterns of life continue every year. In this episode, we're working on expanding your vocabulary to the names of animals in Africa. We're also taking a closer look at what these animals eat and where they fit in with the food chain and food web that chases the energy through the living things. Now, zebras have an interesting place in the food web. They live on the low nutrient grass that larger animals like elands leave untouched. Their need for water causes them to roam and joining their family units into larger herds during the dry season. They can go days without water and then they form a large noisy mass at night when they drink from a watering hole. Now zebras can outrun many predators, but they often slow down on purpose when being pursued so that the stallion in the family can kick the senses out of their pursuer. Now, a zebra's kick is capable of crushing the skull of a lion. I'm learning all kinds of interesting things about zebras. Let's see what you can learn from this video. At home on the plains of Africa, zebras rank among the favorite animals of some. Their zigzag stripes of white and black make zebras stand out from other animals on the African grasslands. Yet these stripes help them blend in where there's tall grass, and the pattern confuses predators when zebras move in herds. 
In describing an animal that may not be familiar to you, you can use a familiar animal that is similar, like a farm animal. Then add how the unfamiliar animal is different. Now, readers or listeners will have the farm animal as their mental picture and then note the important differences. In the case of a zebra, a familiar animal that comes to mind is a horse. Then note the differences in appearance, the spiky mohawk-like mane and the black and white zigzag stripes. When it comes to adaptations, differences may not be visible. Zebras go without food or water during migrations of hundreds of miles on Africa's Serengeti Plains. Don't try that with a horse. Here are more adaptations that zebras have. The plain zebra has um, sharp eyesight so they can see their predators. They also have hooves so they so they they can run fast. Any other adaptations? Uh yeah. Their coat um their coat helps confuse predators. <laughs>